Welcome to St Mary's Church, Swansea, shining brightly in the heart of the city. There's been a church on this site since the 12th century. Today's church was opened in May 1959, having been rebuilt following its destruction on the 21st of February 1941, after being set alight by incendiary bombs on the third night of the Swansea Blitz. The new St Mary's was built between 1895 and 1899, whilst James Allen Smith was vicar. It was consecrated in 1898 by the Right Reverend John Owen, Bishop of St David's, with the tower being finished 12 months later. It was built to a design by the eminent London architect, Sir Arthur Blomfield. Sadly, it lasted only 42 years. The night after the Blitz, all that was left was a burnt-out shell. There were early thoughts of demolishing the church and leaving the site altogether, leaving the damaged church as a war memorial and even building a new modern church. But in the end, and because of the money available from the War Damages Commission for what they termed as plain repairs, it was decided to rebuild on the footprint of Blomfield's church, along with some modern alterations and additions. An appeal was launched to raise £100,000 to carry out these extras and to furnish the church. We are lucky to have a copy of some 16mm home movie footage from the family of the late Dr Glyn Jones, showing some of the stages of the rebuilding and the services that were held in the church between 1954 and 1959. And I'd like to share those with you now with some sort of commentary by way of an explanation. On the 19th of July 1954, a brief service was held in the shell of the church, led by the Bishop of Swansea and Brecon, Glyn Simon, to seek God's blessing on the rebuilding which was about to start. The procession, led by the processional cross from St James's Church with servers, the St Mary's banner made especially for the occasion by the daughter of Gigi Phillips the Undertaker, the choir, clergy, church wardens and bishop made its way slowly through the shell of the church and onto a covered platform erected for the occasion. A large congregation of nearly a thousand people had gathered for the short service, more than twice as many as had been expected. The first and very short excerpt of the film was taken inside the shell of the old church before the service had started and the congregation had gathered. In the foreground we see Mrs Marjorie James, wife of the Reverend Garfield James, who had been a curate of St Mary's between 1935 and 1940, carrying their six-month-old baby Angela. The interior walls are looking grey and weather-beaten after 13 years of exposure to the elements. There are three people who feature prominently in the film excerpts that we shall see. These were the builders of today's St Mary's. Firstly, John James Absalom Thomas, fondly known as Jack, was vicar of St Mary's for 13 years before being made bishop of the Diocese of Swansea and Brecon in 1958. He was the man responsible for starting the great work of the reconstruction of St Mary's. It was he who undertook the decision to rebuild this great church in the centre of Swansea and to build it in the same style as the Church of 1898. How wonderful then that he should, as Bishop of the Diocese, reconsecrate the Church that he had laboured so much on. Secondly, Herbert Morris Stevens, Church Warden and Treasurer of the Restoration Appeal. It is said that he was already thinking of the rebuilding of St Mary's the morning after the Blitz. As it was written at the time, bishops may direct and vicars enthuse, and architects plan, but it has been H.M. Stevens who, by astute management, has made it possible for the work to go on without ceasing. His driving energy will not let him rest until St. Mary's is opened and paid for. Then in the second exit of film, we meet Tom Patterson, noticeable in his brown jacket and dusty trilby. He completes the trio of builders of St Mary's. He was a master stonemason and was site foreman at St Mary's from the beginning and was naturally proud of the church.
It was said at the time that he was a great craftsman, a man of humility who loved St. Mary's, and an example to all who were involved. He had previously worked on Swansea's Guild Hall and Kevin Coyd Hospital. Here the men rebuild the north wall as we look down into the St Anne Chapel. And now the scaffolding around the tower in order to repair a major crack which had appeared after the Blitz. Not much sign of health and safety there today. It was in July 1920 that St Mary's was visited by Their Majesties King George V and Queen Mary along with the Princess Royal. The vicar that day was Harrington Clare Lees, who became Archbishop of Melbourne soon afterwards. On June 25, 1955, St Mary's was privileged to receive another royal visit, when the Duchess of Gloucester consented to come to St Mary's when she was visiting Swansea that day and unveil a stone to commemorate her visit. A large congregation gathered within the shell of the church. Many stood under all the scaffolding, whilst a small number of chairs were provided for the elderly and some special guests. One of the Mayor's Wardens, Mr Rosser, distinguishable by his white gloves, makes his way through the congregation. and the new provincial flag flies highly above the church. And as the cross and attendants arrive, we notice on the left the vicar's son, David Thomas, who himself became a bishop in the church in Wales in 1996. The bishop, Glyn Simon, with the vicar, Jack Thomas and the choir await at the west gate for the arrival of the Duchess. And here the Vicar's Wardens, D.L. Griffiths on the left and H.M. Stevens on the right, take their place in the procession. The Duchess was led into church by the Vicar with his Wardens, Mr. Turner, the Chief Constable of Swansea Borough Police, the Mayor's Wardens, alongside the her with the Bishop and Percy Morris, the Mayor of Swansea. She unveiled a plaque at the west wall of the church before taking her place on a covered platform at the front of the church. Thankfully the platform was covered because as the service started it began to drizzle and many in the congregation were caught out. At the end of the service, she was invited to sign a visitor's book. And then made her way back to her car, accompanied by the vicar, the bishop, the mayor and the church wardens. In April 1957, the vicar was able to report in the parish magazine that the roof trusses were now taking shape. Health and safety? What health and safety, I hear you say. And now a short excerpt of film showing the roof taking shape, firstly from the south of the church, and you'll notice that the windows on the south wall have been made higher. Here from the northwest, looking towards the tower, the lich gate still in place, and now from Castle Gardens, looking over the church in the afternoon sun. In the May 1957 Parish Magazine, the vicar wrote, 
My dear friends, please mark down May 30th as a very special day for the parish. Not only is it the festival of our Lord's Ascension, but it will be the occasion of our next great service at St. Mary's. It will be the third of such services. You will recall that we met on July 19th, 1954, to ask of God's blessing on the rebuilding work, then about to commence. On June 28th, 1955, we were privileged to see Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Gloucester, lay a stone in the church. This third service will mark the beginning of the last stage in the work of reconstruction and will probably be the last such service it will be convenient to have before the work is finished. Do come to St Mary's on Thursday, May 30th at 6.30pm and there thank God for what has been done and ask his assistance in all that remains for us to do. The procession makes its way along Orange Street into Church Street, led by the choir, the St Mary's banner, the clergy of the parish, the church wardens and the vicar. They make their way through the West Gate, where the Bishop Glyn Simon joins the procession, and they make their way to church. The congregation of about 700 stood among the scaffolding for the short service and would probably have gazed at the gaps in the masonry where the windows would be placed. There was no roof and many would have found it difficult to imagine what the church would look like when complete. As the procession of choir and clergy and congregation leave the church through the scaffolding and builders' materials, one person will stand out. A tall, slim cleric by the name of Harry Craven Williams. He was a curate of St Mary's between 1933 and 1939, now vicar of Sketty. He sees the camera, acknowledges it. Little did he realise that within 18 months he would be the next vicar of St Mary's taken over this great church. It is now spring 1959 and the church nears completion. The west door still bears the scorch marks of the devastating fire that destroyed the church, deliberately left as a reminder of the Blitz and that St Mary's had indeed risen like a phoenix from the ashes. And now some shots of the nearly finished church taken on a beautiful spring afternoon. The clock with its hands regilded. Buses wait to pick up their passengers. After all, most buses terminated at St Mary's Church years ago. The walls and railings still in place. It was 1964 before they were taken away. And looking at the church, the St Anne Chapel, the new bath stone glistens brightly against the older part of the church. The 28th of May 1959 was a big day in the life of the town of Swansea. It had been 18 long years since the bombing had devastated the town centre and St Mary's was now ready to be reconsecrated in the presence of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth the Queen Mother, who had seen the ruined church when she visited the town with King George VI in March 1941. As was expected, tickets were in great demand for the service 
and many were disappointed. And so the big day has arrived. Mrs. Williams, the vicar's wife in the blue dress, waits patiently at the southwest door of the church. Whilst members of the congregation arrive to take their places, the pavements are crowded with onlookers, hoping to get a glimpse of the Queen Mother when she arrives. And now the trumpeters of the Welsh Regiment take their places. They will play a fanfare to signify the arrival of the Queen Mother. And now the first of the processions. The cross of St James's Church leads the choir boys, men and ladies of the choir, whilst the banner of St Mary's follows. And now the clergy processions. Here the Reverend Hugh Jones leads one, and behind him two servers from the Guild of the Servants of the Sanctuary, and a group of visiting clergy. The second group is led by the Reverend Ron Lloyd, also on the staff of St Mary's. And now the dignitaries arrive by bus from the Guild Hall. and to now the procession of bishops, led by the Bishop of Swansea and Brecon, looking resplendent in red cope and mitre, and attended by Mervyn Jones and his son David. He is followed by the Bishop of St David's, and he too is followed by the Archbishop of Wales, preceded by the Archiepiscopal Cross. They make their way to the West Gate, where they will be presented to the Queen Mother on her arrival. And so Ronnie Thomas, the Evening Post photographer, nonchalantly walks across the gathering to get a best place for a photograph. The bishop and the vicar wait patiently, along with members of the clergy, whilst the two church wardens, D.L. Griffiths and H.M. Stevens exchange places. And now the final guests before the Queen Mother arrives. And here, led by the Chief Constable of Swansea Borough Police, Mr. Turner, the mace bearers arrive in the churchyard. As the bishop speaks to William George, the mayor of Swansea, the vicar speaks to Her Majesty, showing her the church. They make their way to the southwest porch. And whilst the Queen Mother makes her way into church, the bishop takes his place at the west door, waiting for the service to start, where Mr Stevens will read the petition to consecrate the church. As Her Majesty the Queen Mother enters the church, we now look at the black and white film that the BBC gifted to St Mary's after the event and the voice of Winford Vaughan Thomas. Queen Mother, with the Mayor of Swansea at her side, is escorted by the Vicar Canon Williams to her seat in the nave.
soon as Her Majesty has been seated, the choir will leave the choir stalls and go to the west door. now towards the west door. When they reach the west door, they and the congregation will sing God Save the Queen. Outside, as they stand within the church, the Bishop of Swansea and Brecon waits with his attendants and his two chaplains. And there wait too the church wardens. They represent the citizens of Swansea and they will petition the bishop to re-consecrate their church. There, at the head of the male section following the choir boys, distinguished in his white hair, you will see one of the links with the past that make this day's ceremony very moving for Swansea folk. That is Mr. Barlow. He sang at the reconsecration service in 1898 of what was then the new church of Swansea. Now in his 70th year, he is still singing in the service of the church. St. Mary's has three curates to assist the vicar. They come forward now. On them will depend the work a great deal of the new church. The vicar bows. The west door. The Bishop of Swansea and Brecon waits for admittance. There's the petition of the church wardens. Thank you. Right Reverend John, by divine permission, Lord Bishop of Swansea and Brecon, the humble petition of Harry Craven Williams, Herbert Morris Stevens, Albert Edwin Rosser, David Lloyd Griffiths, and John Henry Jones, the vicar and church wardens respectively of the parish of Swansea St. Mary with Holy Trinity, in the county borough of Swansea and the diocese and jurisdiction of your lordship. Show it that the parish church of St. Mary Swansea in the county borough of Swansea was destroyed by enemy action on the 21st day of February 1941 and on that account has since been unusable as the parish church of the parish that the church has been duly restored and made fit for divine worship with all things requisite. That by reason of the destruction of the church, it is felt that it may have suffered profanation which it is expedient should be purged. Your petitioners therefore pray that your lordship will be pleased to perform such service within the church and pronounce such sentence of reconsecration or reconciliation as may be required by the ecclesiastical law of the church in Wales or may seem meet and suitable to your lordship. Dated the 28th day of day in the year of our Lord 1959 signed by the vicar and the four church wardens. Reverend Father in God, we pray you reconsecrate our church. In the name of God, then let us begin. Let us pray. Prevent us, O Lord, in all our doings with thy most gracious favor 
and further us with thy continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in thee, we may glorify thy holy name, and finally by thy mercy obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. We the King of glory. It is the Lord, strong and mighty. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord, strong and mighty. It is the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? It is the Lord, strong and mighty. It is the Lord, mighty in battle, even the Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Open, open, open. to this house from God our Heavenly Father. Peace be to this house from God the Son who is our peace. Peace be to this house from God the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. church was reconsecrated by the Bishop of Swansea and Brecon, the Right Reverend John James Absalom Thomas, Bishop Jack. The sermon was preached by the Most Reverend Edwin Morris, Archbishop of Wales, and after the high altar had been consecrated by the Bishop, the Archbishop consecrated the altar in St Anne's Chapel, and the Bishop of St David's, the Right Reverend John Richards, consecrated the altar of Holy Trinity in the Welsh language. Meanwhile, Miss Pamela Williams, daughter of the vicar, waited patiently outside the church for her big moment to arrive when she was to present a bouquet of flowers to the Queen Mother. After the service had finished, the Queen Mother visited the new Holy Trinity Chapel before moving to the attached new vestry hall where the church wardens and other dignitaries were presented to her. As she left the church, Her Majesty signed the visitor's book and unveiled a stone plaque near the west door to commemorate her visit. As the door opened at the end of the service, Pamela took her place in readiness to present the bouquet of flowers. Unfortunately, the camera missed that moment and Pamela made a quick exit, not giving the Queen Mother a chance to say thank you. Fortunately, Ronnie Thomas, the South Wales Evening Post photographer, who always seemed to manage to get in the right place at the right time at all events, 
did so on this occasion too. And so the Queen Mother leaves St. Mary's, accompanied by the vicar and the mayor. It's been a wonderful day in the life of St. Mary's. And as the verger, Jack Thomas, the church wardens, the bishops and their attendants wait at the west door, we also see Mrs. Williams and her sister, her niece and Pamela, along with Margaret Walker. And now the bishops leave church, Bishop St. David's, and on his right shoulder, the Reverend Garfield James, who we spoke to about earlier. And now the processional cross, followed by the boy choristers. The ladies of the choir, the banner of St. Mary's, and the choir master Hayden James waves to the camera. We must be grateful to everyone who contributed to the rebuilding of the church. To Bishop Jack Thomas, to H.M. Stevens and Tom Patterson, the builders who drove the project forward, to the Reverend Harry Craven Williams, who became vicar of St. Mary's in September 1958 picked up the baton and along with Mr Stevens ensured that the church was completed, furnished and the debt cleared. The newest part of the church is the Holy Trinity Chapel, designed by Sir Percy Thomas and now beautified with the windows and dorsal painting to a design by the world-renowned 20th century artist John Piper. This chapel built outside the footprint of Smith's Church uh, which was consecrated in 1898, is the latest chapter of church building in the life of St. Mary's Swansea, which has been altered, added to, partly and totally rebuilt and modernised over the last 850 years. <laughs> 